So therefore, this meeting is, then you, you get your, your neo-colonial civil servants. They talk of import support. Imagine there is money for import support. Import support, import support. Uh -huh. The governor writes to me, reports, we have got import cover for so many months. But I don't want to import, I want to export. Why don't you tell me about import substitution and export promotion? Instead you are telling me of import support. Money. So money is available for him to, to, to become more dependent. So I'm, I'm very glad to hear what the, now, finally, the cars, which we told our people about in the 1960s, we told them, part of the wars we fought in Uganda, we are to get rid of the neo-colonial groups which were there, which were stopping us from thinking. We are to get rid of them by force. But one of the problems was Africa producing raw materials. Materiel primaire. They call it in Francais. Materiel primaire. Raw materials. Imagine coffee. The global value of coffee is $460 billion. All the coffee producing countries of the world, Brazil, us, all this, we only get 25 billion of that. Out of the 460 billion, Af uh, the, the, the coffee producing countries get 25 billion. And Africa gets only 2.5 billion. 900 million of that comes to Uganda because Uganda produces a lot of coffee. A country like, like Germany, which has no coffee, earns $65 billion from coffee. So, this, this I sell a kilo of coffee, good grade coffee, $2.5. Somebody in London will get $241 from that one kilo. Okay, there are, there are other costs on the way. I don't want, I don't want to, because he has, he's, the, he's the owner of a restaurant and so on. But coffee roasting, coffee roasting, coffee grinding, coffee packing must happen here in Africa. It must happen at source. The shirt I'm putting on is Ugandan cotton. I don't put on foreign clothes. It's only the trousers I'm putting on because I can't go naked. Because they have not solved that problem for me. So, if you look at, at, at cotton, how many job levels are there? job levels. You grow the cotton. Okay, that, that one we do. Those, those jobs we do. We gin, gin the cotton. Kto and begu, remove the seeds. That one we do here. And we end there. When you hear all these countries which have got crisis, Burkina Faso, I don't know what, Mali, all of them are cotton growing countries. But how much textiles are they producing? They are importing textiles, I don't know from where. So now if you end at level two, ginning, removing the seeds, then you take the palm, you take the cotton to clever people. People are clever. What were in your kid? Wako. She's up to Tajita VP. 
kama mtu anakuzida akili wewe unasema unasema wewe nani so they take the, the cotton they spin spinning more money more jobs for their children they weave more money more jobs for their children they put the the print more money more jobs for their children the i i, I looked at uh, the figures uganda consumes 276 million meters of textiles each year and that wonderful country of yours spends 888 million dollars on, on clothes some of them dead people's clothes from europe when people die their clothes they are sent to to you people to africa and we spend 800 all the money we earn from coffee goes back to bring dead people's clothes but for we have got one factory there called called Nitir it 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 produces 25 million liters uh, million meters so in order to clothe our people in Uganda without importing we need about 11 factories like the one of Nitir and they would uh, they would employ about 20,000 people so there and we would save 880 million dollars which we are just giving to other people so this aida uh, what did you say about the modern slavery of the africans of producing raw materials in one of our documents in in, in Addis Ababa we had talked of africa producing what it does not consume and consuming what it does not produce they, they had put that uh, as a summary in, in one of the documents of the african union we must get rid of the production of raw i banned the export of minerals from uganda and process i banned them pika marufuku then the agents were going in the corridors what mufaji no mineral will come from uganda if it's not processed you wait until I, I i i go away you can steal the minerals but not now i banned this export of unprocessed minerals in 2012 my my young brother his excellency ruto i forgave him and gave him some some little iron ore for i think two or three years because i've got a lot of iron ore one of the best in the world i told him, his excellency ruto's man muindi 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 wa hapa kenya you come and build the steel factory in uganda at, at the at the iron ore oh yeah, yeah. as we were already built in Mombasa so i said okay because of my young friend i give you some iron ore for two i think two or three years but come and put the factory here now you can imagine akiria yawat wenu my civil servants an indian wanted to take that iron ore to india imagine iron ore in in runyankore in our language is called obtare but it is it is uh, soil soil black soil if you see it it is soil to take that to india and do what pay your wonderful people 47 dollars per ton our iron ore is the purest in the world It is 70% pure, so you need like one and a half tons to make a ton of steel. Now, a ton of steel costs $700. Somebody gives you $47. 
on your on your pro, on your wealth, the wealth of, 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 of your people, and he gets seven hundred dollars from it. And all the jobs, your children have no have no jobs. I, I can't be part of that treachery. So I banned there would be no export of unprocessed minerals from Uganda. So there's no business. What do you mean there's no business? So when I banned them, they are flocking in now. They have opened seven gold refineries. Seven gold refineries. They are there. Because I banned. Uh -huh. The other day I was opening a tin, a tin refinery. You can imagine this tin, and uh, the, the Suru, Samia may know where we were, the power station, both sides, the Uganda side and the Tanzanian side. That is all tin, tin. But all this time, imagine since the, the British were here, they were taking uh, stones because tin in nature is a stone, looks like a stone. So they take that and they give my people $11 per kilo. And they take it to, to cleverer people. For the cleverer people, they get $32. What, what, my people got 11 those people get $32. And all the jobs. So when I was opening the factory, I was asking the, the, the refinery, I was asking them, this boy who, who opened the refinery is a Canadian. I was asking them, are you Canada? America umemewake. Has this Canadian brought his own electricity? No. Anatomia, umeme wakwetu. Aha. Ameleta maji yake, ya factory. No, anatomia maji yetu. Internet, anatomia ya nani, ya kwetu. The, so, out of the 32 dollars, much of, of that money will remain in Uganda. Pay for the raw material, pay for the electricity, pay for the water, all that remains in Uganda. So, what does, first of all, my African brothers and sisters say about this hemorrhage of Africa? Hemorrhage. Kuto, we call it in Uganda. This hemorrhage must stop. The crisis you see in these countries is because of Stag stagnation of the last 60 years since independence. The population is increasing, the economies are not increasing. What do you expect? So with these few words, Your Excellencies, what do I say? Masibuku.